This is a cyclical supercell. These are the types of storms that can be some of the most damaging and deadly. So it's important for spotters to understand how the supercell cycle process works. Meteorologist and longtime storm chaser Andrew Pritchard got some great time lapse sequences of this storm as it cycled between tornadoes number two and three. We'll use his video to illustrate the supercell cycle process. Here's a developing supercell in western Illinois, a few minutes before it produces a brief tornado. Step one is the storm establishing an updraft base. This flat area of cloud on the southern flank of the storm that usually starts out pretty rain free. We've got strong inflow feeding into the storm's updraft. We have an established forward flank downdraft off to the north. That forward flank downdraft is probably kicking up this bit of lowering under the storm's base here. Watch that base churn and evolve. See if you can make out a shape starting to form behind it. Step two is when our rear flank downdraft appears. It punches through the updraft base, making a nice hole we call the RFD clear slot. The RFD causes the updraft to bow out into a distinct horseshoe shape, telltale structure that we've got a supercell. At the ground, the RFD and FFD continue to fan out. Our inflow winds get pinched between these two gust fronts, often causing the inflow wind speed to ramp up like a river being pushed through a small channel. This is textbook structure you'd see just prior to tornado genesis. I've got this looped a few times as it's a short sequence but I want you to see that horseshoe taking shape in the storm's base and the curling northern end of it. Step three is when the rear flank downdraft overtakes the forward flank downdraft, leaving behind an occluded gust front. The updraft is effectively pinched off from surface base inflow at this point. The updraft wraps itself up in this occluded front. The end of the occluded gust front becomes the focal point for tornado formation on a typical supercell and typical tornado. Visually, you're going to see that horseshoe really start to bow and the top or north end may be curling up. Here's the formation of the Valley City EF0, tornado number three out of this cyclical supercell. The fourth and final step is the death of the updraft base. Once you've got that occluded gust front, the original updraft is entering a weakening phase. As long as the environment has favorable low-level instability and wind shear, and the storm can draw in warm moist inflow, it will repeat this process beginning back at step one. While the old updraft base fans out, disorganizes, and dissolves, the storm will form a new updraft downstream, which is usually to the northeast on a conventional northeast moving supercell. Visually, you'll see the horseshoe fan out and fall apart, while a new flat cloud base forms ahead of it. It's important to keep in mind that the supercell can start a new cycle before the old one is finished. This is usually how some storms can produce more than one tornado at a time. Also keep in mind that it can take several cycles before the storm is able to produce a tornado, and most of these cycles do not result in a tornado. It's common for a storm to fall apart after the first cycle as it chokes on its own outflow and can't regain that warm, moist inflow.